Good morning and welcome to Squawk Box on CNBC. I'm Joe Kern along with Michelle Caruso Cabrera and our newest member of the Squawk Box crew. Punch. Here it is. Punch. Right Do you remember when what? William Hurt was teaching? Yes. What's his name? Aaron. Uh, sweaty guy. Aaron who? I know who you're, uh, talking. Know who you're talking about. Albert like, Brooks. Yeah. And there like you saw punch, that video. Punch, punch, it, is it, punch. Are we going to show some Anchorman video? No, all, yeah, but all you know, I thought I was going to sweat right there. I think I'm going to sweat through my shirt. I know what made Anchorman is... so funny. What was that? It's really accurate in many ways. Yeah. <laughs> so. Our guest host for the hour, uh, Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania, a member of the Joint Economic uh, Committee and the Budget Committee. We're going to hear from him uh, in just a moment. You want to hear from him now? Um, uh, what's that? Okay, we're going to hear from you quickly now because Kayla's. Uh, oops. <laughs> Kayla's microphones not, are dropping. Here we Kayla's go. Kayla's not ready. <laughs> Kayla's not ready. She's over in uh, Scotland Yard. In Scotland Yard. Um, we'll get this done. I, I don't, you know, we love talking about it, but I, I can see the writing on the wall. Harry Reid and McConnell are both doing it now. Uh, the cover of the post today was that uh, the president, uh, O'Blinks, opened a GOP's debt plan with no tax hike. So it'll, something will happen, won't it? You well, want it to? look, um, no, I do want this to be resolved. What I'm worried about is what I've been worried about all along, which is that the resolution is going to be a huge increase in the debt limit with no structural reforms, no real cuts in spending. It's not over yet. We've still got a fight to, to have over this, uh, but, uh, but I am worried, and I think that's the worst case would you possible. rather? Okay, so would you have rather had huge spending cuts with huge tax increases? No, no. Uh, look. The problem is in taxes, right? No, I know. I the know current tax how do you get it done without that? Well, you know, you got to convince the president that the American people want spending cuts, which is exactly where the You can't convince his base are. to go along with him. Well, he's got to decide whether he wants to uh, assuage his base or appeal to a broader part of the American electorate, and more importantly, do something constructive for the economy. You know, raising taxes and continuing down this road, is this is going to consign us to economic mediocrity for... Who knows how long? What about the idea if you get three to one? Um, no, it, look, it, it, you, know, you get eighty percent of what you saw the David Brooks piece. And, and, and then what so we much. do, and then what we do is we raise taxes and lock in this huge expansion of government, which means lower economic growth, less prosperity, less opportunity. Well, why does it I'm mean not that? Interested in that? Why does it absolutely mean that? Oh, why we, does we got hundred years I'm, of I'm, proof for that, yeah. honey? <laughs> be, because the more of the resources of a society that's controlled by the political class the less rational the allocation of those resources the lower the economic growth there's huge amount of uh, okay i'm, I'm going to push back on that and we can hopefully talk but about you know that, that throughout the broadcast i mean um, in general you know state run enterprises don't really allocate capital and 90 cents goes through the cracks most of the time you've seen it i mean you've seen it historically right Russia, that, that i will not disagree Cuba, with but uh, historically currently like how about how about europe right now we're, we're going to move from washington uh to london <laughs> our story of the morning uh the scandal at newer news corporation growing over the week and more arrests and the head of Scotland Yard now stepping down. CNBC's Kayla Tausche, I got that one right, I believe, uh, joins us from outside of Scotland Yard. Kayla. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, that's right. Yesterday, we saw the resignation of top cop here in London, Sir Paul Stevenson, uh, the latest in a series of high-profile defections associated with that ever-growing phone hacking scandal over at News Corporation. Take a listen. I've taken this decision as a consequence of the ongoing speculation and accusations relating to the Met's links with News International at a senior level. The spotlight is now shifting toward John Yates, assistant police commissioner and deputy to Stevenson. The public is now increasingly wary of any police involvement and what he may have had to do with the News International scandal. He has been called to give evidence to Parliament ahead of tomorrow's hearing, where both Rupert and James Murdoch will be appearing. A statement from the Metropolitan Police Authority today is expected to be forthcoming in just about an hour or so. But the fate of James Murdoch is the one that might be in limbo at this point. The young Younger Murdoch will appear with his father, as we said, on Tuesday. But perhaps the more important meeting for James, as far as his career goes, is the Thursday meeting of the B Sky B Board, where James still remains non executive chairman. Guys, you can imagine that on the plate uh, for discussion there will be whether it's a good idea for the association of B Sky B to remain with News Corp with James Murdoch at the helm there. So that's definitely something we'll be watching. And those are the latest developments here. Back over to you. Kayla, thanks for the update. Uh, now for more on the News Corp scandal, we're going to be joined by Eric Bollard. He's the media. He's from Media Matters for uh, America, and he's a senior fellow. Thank you for joining us this Thanks. morning. Uh, you know, we've been talking all morning, uh, trying to understand 
how this story gets from the UK potentially across the Atlantic. Does it actually infect the rest of the business? That's the issue that I think yep. shareholders are thinking about today. How do you handicap that? It's already here. Uh, that's the problem for News Corp. I mean, look at Les Hinton on Friday. I had to resign as the publisher of Wall Street Journal, uh, chairman of uh, Dow Company. Uh, he's a central player in this scandal. He was uh, Murdoch's right-hand man, oversaw an internal investigation that was supposed to look into what they had done, went before Parliament 2007, 2009, said, we're fine, we're clean, we found one bad apple. That's, okay, been, so, that's been a disaster. So that, that is, is, he is here. He was running the U.S. company that starts to taint everything. What, but what does that ultimately mean for the profit engines of this company, which, which are here? It's the entertainment business. Yes. It's the TV business. How does that really get infected? We've heard their FBI investigations right. going on. Uh, we've heard about uh, potential uh, foreign corrupt practices. Is this story, is this, A, it doesn't seem like a story that goes away, but B, no. do, do we actually think it actually gets to those other businesses? Right, and one other point, Jude Law, the report was over the weekend while he was in the United States, his phone was hacked. So again, that brings it closer to the United States. But right, the wall that Murdoch is building is around his movie studios and his television license. Right. That's what he has to hang on to. That is what drives the company. And so he's building these walls around it. If he loses the newspaper, so be it. If he loses some other thing, so be it. So I think right now, the, the you know, the studios and the TV is safe. But right. then again, who would have thought 10 days Days ago, we'd be where we are now. You know, in the last hour, we were talking to Tom Wilson and we were asking, you know, does this touch, does it ever really touch somebody with Murdoch in their last name? I mean, do, oh, you, yeah. do you actually, I mean, we just saw Rebecca Brooks right. get arrested. We've seen a lot. Do you see in your, in your uh, crystal ball somebody actually being arrested that has Murdoch in their last name? Arrested or resigned, James Murdoch, the question is, is he gonna, is he right. going to, uh, man, is he gonna survive this? We don't know. Arrested, I don't know. Being arrested in the and UK how, is a little and, bit and different. And when you think about the family here. and the dynasty, how yeah. important is James in that? Meaning, can Lachlan come in? Can Elizabeth Murdoch come in? Does Rupert ultimately put uh, uh, Chase Carey in charge? What, how, does, how, does this, how do we see this ultimately playing That's out? That's the problem. And Rupert here is, is on his own, and he's in over his head. He continues to lose key executive after key executive. You know, he had made a decision about Elizabeth. He had made a decision about Lachlan. They're not where James is, apparently, for a reason. And so if he loses James as well, I mean, just look back to Lon Jacobs, who left News Corp three weeks before the scandal broke. He was the general counsel right. at News Corp, longtime trusted advisor of Murdoch. Those are the type of people who are no longer around, and Murdoch cannot handle this okay, by I'm going to throw out one idea, which is, you know, we've heard all these headlines, yeah. and we've heard about lots of people getting arrested. Nobody ultimately has actually been indicted, right. from what right. I understand. Which is a little different in the UK. Which is right. a little bit different. But, but so speak to that. Is there a possibility that we are in a massive witch hunt that goes on for however long, but ultimately becomes sort of a sideshow. Well, I mean, people, the editors are going to, the people who are overseeing the hacking and the people who are hiring the editors and the private investigators, I think they are in serious legal problem, jeopardy. Whether the Andy Colsons, the Rebecca Brooks, and some of the others um, who are supposed to have known what's going on right. underneath them, whether they're going to be in legal trouble, I don't know. I don't think this is a witch hunt. We're beyond witch hunt. We are in serious, are this we, is a serious problem. To, to go back to the original question about hitting the revenue streams, of this, yeah. are we at a situation where people actually stop advertising on American Idol? I don't think so, but here's here's the wild card. You know, there's the there's the allegation that there were 9/11 victims' uh, phones were hacked. That was the allegation made in the British press. If that is proven true, News Corp in the United States is in a wor uh, in a world of hurt. They are in Legal, serious Legal, financial, everything, everything like everything. PR, you name it, disaster. There's no, we don't haven't seen any proof of that. The FBI is investigating that. That is what should have everyone on Sixth Avenue in New York City very nervous. Hey, you have a view on this? You've been following the story. Um, you know, my view is this is a matter for law enforcement to figure out. And, you're you're going to uh, get out of the way. I, I've more than got my hands full right now. Uh, okay. Who knows where this ends? Okay, fair enough. Eric, thank you thank so you. much for the update. All right, among the other stories that we're following this morning, President Obama has picked former Ohio Attorney General Richard Cordray to head the new Consumer Protection Agency, but Senate Republicans are already threatening to block Cordray's confirmation. Bookseller borders may be closer to liquidation. The Wall Street Journal reporting that a Sunday deadline passed without any bids for the bankrupt chain. A bankruptcy court auction is scheduled for tomorrow. As the battle over a debt limit extension continues, Moody's is suggesting the U.S. eliminate the debt ceiling altogether. Moody's says that would reduce uncertainty among debt holders, and we should also mention that uh, yields in Europe are rising once again, so there's a lot of concern about sovereign risk as well. Jeff. Let's uh, get back to, uh, to Senator Toomey again on this, uh, on this issue. Here, here's, let's go back where we were in, in summer. So I know what, what the, the House Republicans would like, 
and I know what the president's likely to give. And I know I, I kept, you know, suddenly he, he loves press conferences. He's right. had like eight in two right. weeks after, right. you know, two for the previous year. So he, li he likes to kind of lecture about peas and homework and, yeah. and, and things like that. M mind you, this is the president whose budget got precisely zero votes on the Senate floor. And, and who, was, who had Simpson Bowles. Yeah. Uh, a year and a half ago, or whenever right. it was, and did nothing on it until right. until now. Now, now for, the mantle of deficit cutter right, is suddenly. Right. For, and, and this is why I think it is completely defies any credibility that he was ever serious about meaningful spending cuts. What in this administration's behavior would give us any reason to believe they ever were? He he punts on any real decisions and punts it to a commission, then ignores the commission. He submits a budget that is routinely panned even by his friends in the press. It gets zero votes. On the battle over the CR, does anybody dispute that that was John Boehner fighting for spending and the administration fighting against any kind of spending cuts? I mean, Boehner fighting for spending cuts, the administration resisting all of it. And what was their initial position on this debt limit? And for a long time, they wanted a clean increase, right? Give us $2.4 trillion of additional borrowing authority with no strings attached, no conditions. So that's where they've always been. This is about dramatically expanding but, but the size of government. They don't want to cut spending you know he anywhere. Was gonna, he was going to get something for, for his base. And you knew the, the House Republicans were not going to give him something. And also when that grand deal was happening, um, to, to allow, I knew the Republicans wouldn't give him a big victory going into 2012 as, as, a, as a deficit, as a big deal maker, a four uh, see, I disagree with that. I think for Paul, and in private conversations on a daily basis since January, there was a broad consensus among Senate Republicans that if we can get a grand bargain. Without any tax increases. As long as it, right, right. Well, <laughs> I mean, we're not, not never, interested in damage. That was never going to happen, though. That's the well, whole thing. Well, you know, this is amazing to me that we're going to spend $45 trillion over the next 10 years, and the administration can't find anything that they can no, acknowledge. Why it's can't, just a little too much. Why spending. can't we do a clean raise that goes till January of uh, 2013, a year and a half. And let the voters well, decide that, that's what they probably want the this, this, this Why not do it that there. way? And we, and we can decide, the voters because can decide. Because I'm not sure we've got until January 2013 to solve this problem. When do we have problem. to? Oh, nobody knows, right? But I will tell you, I think if you, and, and, and but you'll let, you, you'll you let August 2nd come and go, correct? What, I mean, Look, if the deal is just vote to continue with business as right. usual, I would vote against that yeah, deal. Yeah, but that's off the table now anyway, Andrew. They're going to do this. The McConnell-Reed thing is going to... You know, but before we, before we go there, uh, how about what the House is about to do? Well, the House is about to pass a bill, I think this week, that says we'll give you, Mr. President, the full debt increase, debt limit increase you asked. All we ask in return is you help put us on a path to a balanced budget. This is Don't have to get there overnight. Let's, how about a path to the But you know, well, this you is know a waste what? of but, time. But you this is that. a waste of time because the president refuses no, to go I know, down but, this road. Now, why do now, it? Bill, why, why spend any time to it? Why, why, we why not on make, what we have to do? Why, why does the president get off the hook on this? Why, why should it be that it's the Republicans' fault when Republicans are offering because this is you know the second no variation. chance of passing. So right? the, all, the, this, <laughs> all this work, all this work, writing all this stuff. But the down, idea of a balancing budget, you think that makes no sense? That actually makes sense. it this week with no chance of passage. And, and, and then they Bill gotta Clinton get back. Right. But the last time we had a Democratic president and a Republican Congress, the Democratic president said, that's a reasonable idea. We can argue about how long it takes to get there. But he embraced the idea and in fact, balanced the budget. This president dismisses it out of hand and then somehow it's Republicans' fault that, that we're the ones being unreasonable. I, I think- How do you think the PR battle is going right yeah. now? Um, I, look, I think the president had a strong hand and he's played it very well. They have created this shrill exaggeration about the consequences of what will happen if we don't raise the debt limit by August 2nd. That's um, spooking a lot of people. Uh, the press has just beaten that drum uh, pretty regularly. So, you know, the president's playing this Why hand well. Why haven't you guys done a better job of that? Because when the regular press, general media, they conflate not passing an increase with a default, default right away. You're exactly right. right. Um, and I have and been it's very trying. frustrating to watch. I have been trying. It's maddening. Here's a little analysis. I mean, we, we've shut down the government before, right? Remember, that's, everybody that's, remembers that's Newt exactly and Clinton, right. and, and we didn't default. So you, you, think, you think the Democrats are, are, are lying. You think that, that, that when, they, when, when Tim Geithner, who's going to be on the broadcast later, well, says it, that it, August 2nd is it, Armageddon, it, it, here's, it is here's not. A two, this left of center group, right, the Bipartisan Policy Center, has done their analysis. So you don't have to take my word for it, although we've done the same thing. Month of August, $173 billion of revenue. It might actually be considerably more. They're sitting on $95 billion of mortgage-backed securities. Right. What's the cost of interest on our debt? $29 billion. They have demonstrated that we could pay interest on our debt, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, defense vendors, and active duty military personnel, and have money left over 
even if they can't okay, so what doesn't what doesn't get paid then oh well department of education department of agriculture department right. of commerce uh national labor relations board and i've argued that that's very disruptive i am not uh hoping In a good way or bad way <laughs> well that's <laughs> a, you, you, but here's the thing um this is not an optimal way to run the government but it is it is disruptive it is not a catastrophic default i hope you guys will ask secretary geithner in the event that they don't raise the debt limit Will he, will he permit a, a default on our treasuries? Will he choose not to pay interest with all the cash he's going to have? Would they actually choose not to pay Social Security benefits? Because when the president was asked this, if you listen carefully, the president's a very smart guy and trained as a lawyer. He knows how to parse words. He was asked, can you assure the American people that Social Security checks will go out? He quickly broadened it and said, oh, well, you know, there's 80 million checks that have to go out. And I can't assure anybody that right. all of those that checks the, will go out. Well, no, part. of course, we can't pay all of these things, the but we could pay the essential ones. And frankly, how long could this well, possibly go Well, that was like, if on? you like your plan, you can keep it. I mean, that was the same thing in, during Obamacare, during all the, the I'm sorry, Affordable Care Act. Yeah. <laughs> Healthcare <laughs> reform. Right, health care reform. Exactly. So you're outnumbered. Here, Sorry, I see that. You'll, you'll I have see your day. That. You'll have your Three days. to one. I got it. You'll have your days. I got it. You'll have your days. Uh, Senator Toomey is going to stay with us uh, for the, uh, the rest of the hour. One thing I should give you um, access to, yeah. to our email so that you can see what they're saying. What are they <laughs> saying? Do you want to tell don't me or is it, do you want to tell me that during the break? I don't know if you're, do I, you're, am I ready you're, for that? You're, is... you're an idealistic young guy. Um, I, I have, maybe let's do this for a week and then I'll, if you really want to go in after that, I'll let you got If you have thin skin, is it, oh, bad. Is it it's bad? It's thin bad. skin. This, yeah. this early, it's this bad already? Yeah, because people think they send this stuff into cyberspace. They have no idea yeah. that it's someone's on the other end. Oh, they're, okay. Unbelievable. Vicious. Uh, yeah. Still to come, the summer doldrums hitting Wall Street jobs. We're going to talk about that with one of the top headhunters on the street. Plus, we've got a preview tomorrow, uh, or rather, we've got a preview of tomorrow morning's earnings release from Goldman Sachs. And later, Howard Dean and guest host Senator Pat Toomey, they're going to go head-to-head -head over the budget, taxes, health care, and more. And all that's <laughs> leading up to our exclusive interview with Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner at 8 a.m. Eastern this morning. Squawk Box is coming back in a moment.